Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead. As always, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop by anytime you feel, my friend. <laughs> Guys, today I'm going to be canning me some tomato juice. I got a bunch of tomatoes. And what I do, I ain't got a big batch of tomatoes, so I can't get a lot of tomatoes at one time to have enough to make my juice. So I freeze them in the freezer. Then I take them out like last night before I went to bed, I took them out. And I'm trying two different ways this time. I left some just sitting out in an ice chest without water and then I put water over some to thaw now the thing about when you do that when you're saving tomatoes and you're going to freeze them you need to go on and look at your tomatoes good and don't put no bad tomatoes in your freezer because once you thaw them out they kind of they're going to be soft and you ain't going to be able to tell where the bad spots are to cut them out so make sure you freeze only good tomatoes but we're going to be using this here deluxe electric tomato strainer now i've done a review on this tomato strainer a few months back when i purchased it i'll put the link in the description below if you want to go back and watch this video or might attach your member if i attach it above you can go back and watch this video on this tomato strainer and it goes more into detail about it, how you put it together, and the parts it comes with, and all that good stuff. But we're going to be canning our tomatoes, so I got my ball electric water bath over here. Got the hot water in it, and I got my jars washed, and I got my jars in this hot water. That way they'll be sanitized when I get ready. That's going to be a little while later, but I like to go on and get set up. I got my pot. Sitting over here that I'm going to be putting my juice in. So right now we're going to start straining these tomatoes. I'm going to start out with the medium screen on this juicer. Now a couple days ago I just made some 24 pints of salsa. And what I did, I run them tomatoes through the coarse screen on this here strainer. And then I turned around and I run it back through the medium screen on this strainer. But today I'm going to start out with the medium because I'm wanting juice. And after I get through, I'm going to still run this juice through a string bag to get the seeds and all out of it. But we're going to start doing our tomatoes here. And like I said, I got all different kinds of tomatoes. I got yellow honeydew to light tomatoes. Cherokee purples. Roma paste tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, green zebra tomatoes, celebrity tomatoes. I got all kind of tomatoes. So we finna start juicing and see what happens. I'm hoping I got enough red tomatoes to go with these yellow and green tomatoes. And when I'm saying green tomatoes, y'all, these, these green zebra tomatoes here, they small tomatoes, but when they're ripe, they stay green, even though they still have a tomato taste. But your juice is going to be light colored, so I'm hoping I got enough red tomatoes to make my tomato juice red looking. That's going to be kind of funny. I ain't never had no tomato juice that wasn't red. But, so let's get started and see how this thing's going to perform for y'all today. Don't forget to have your little bowl over here at the end to catch your pulp and stuff when it comes out. And we're going to start throwing these tomatoes in there. And one thing I see I like about this frozen thaw tomatoes is I ain't got to do no cutting them up because they soft enough now I can just push them down through this hole. Like I said, I done used this a couple days ago making my salsa. And this here tomato strainer here is a really a time saver. I got some tomatoes that ain't been froze. 
Now then you have to cut up in small enough pieces to go down in this hole. But this speed, speeds the process up because you ain't got to plant your tomatoes and peel them because the pup's going to all come out the end. Look at that. And then, then when I run it back through the fine strainer, I run all this, the juice and all, just pour it back in here with the fine strainer on after a while. And it'll remove a lot more of that. And then I'm going to strain it through a bag. cutting some of these big tomatoes here these big Cherokee tomatoes I'm just cutting the core out that way it won't be so hard on the little motor here you see guys what that salsa look like when you're making salsa look how good that thick that is comes out Then you can go add your peppers and what all you want to add to making your salsa and you got a good thick salsa. You don't want it that thick. Like I said, you run it back through again on the small screen. You see, I got fresh tomatoes cut up in here that hadn't been froze. You just have to cut them up quarter them up so they'll go down this chute. Now you might can start out with the fine screen on here. But to me, I'm gonna turn around and run all that back through. The whole bowl here, I'm gonna run back through when I get done. And it'll get more juice out of that. I was kind of concerned how the frozen tomatoes was gonna work. I ain't never done the frozen tomatoes running it through a strainer. Until, until I bought this one. But actually, I think the frozen tomatoes does better because like I said, once they thaw, they already soft. Now you might lose a little of your juice. They may not be have as much juice in them, but if you got plenty of tomatoes, it makes up the difference. y'all see that pup coming out the end of there you can see how it's I can take it and put it in my hand and it's done squeezed that ass just pup ain't no juice in there it's done got all of the tomato juice out of that that's why I ain't gonna waste my time rerunning this pup y'all over here a little closer so you can see just drop them down in there These tomatoes has been frozen and thawed. These big tomatoes, see, you can just take your hands and pull them apart. Where if they hadn't been thawed like these here fresh ones, I had to cut up in chunks to go down in there. You just push it through with that plunger. Cherry tomatoes work great. When 
I'm canning tomatoes. I like canning my paste tomatoes. So they get thicker tomato. They get more what you call meat on a tomato. And that's ones I can for my tomatoes. But as far as juice, I use every tomato I grow. Or every variety I grow, not every tomato I grow. But that's how you put it down in the plunger. So what I'm gonna do right now, guys, I'm gonna change out this screen and put the smaller screen on here. And we're gonna run this whole pan of juice back through that screen and you'll get a lot more of that out. So when you're doing your straining through your bag or however you strain your, your tomato juice, I do it with a bag strainer. <laughs> See if I can figure out how to get this part off. That just slides off. Now some people are running their pup back through there, but I'm squeezing that pup and it ain't got enough juice for me to waste my time doing that. It's a little messy when you're changing this out, but normally I wouldn't do this right here at this step. What I would do, I'd wait and do all of my tomatoes, and I got big pots, I'd put it all in, and then at the end I would come back and run it the second time. So guys, I was telling you it come with three screens. The one I just took off, the medium, this is the coarse. You can see the holes in it, and this is the fine. So now I'm going to put this fine on here. Attach the trough back on there. Now I'm going to pour this juice out of this pan into me a pot over here. That way I can have my pan to put back under here and then we're going to pour it out of the pot. Show y'all how fast it goes through the second time. Alright, here we go guys. This is going through the fan screen. Y'all can see this is a little messy. This is why I like doing all this outside. I ain't got to worry about splattering it all over the kitchen. You see, you still going to get some stuff that's thicker there. That's why I'm going to have to screen this juice a screen bag this really depends on what you juicing what you using it for we really don't drink tomato juice we just use it to cook with so sometimes my wife likes me to leave the jars with this thicker stuff in it we put up some just tomatoes some just juice and some you got the smaller, about like what you see right here. So you see, it takes longer to go through the fine screen, which makes sense because it's having to squeeze it tighter to get more juice out. But still, this is a time saver because you can just take your tomatoes straight out of the garden, wash them up good, cut them up, run them through here. You ain't got to blanch them, peel them. All that's coming out the end down here. Also, y'all can see how good looking juice that makes when you run it through the second time. I'm gonna put a tomato in here now to help push 
Head on through. I know some of you guys gonna watch this and y'all gonna say, well, he's using his hands touching that. Well, I got news for you. You out on the homestead and you've been doing this for years, you ain't worrying about taking a spoon because when you set that spoon down over there, it ain't no cleaner than your hands are. You just keep your hands washed. I got sanitizer right here with my sink. I steady washing my hands because you got to use your hands to work. I can promise you, all them canned foods y'all eat and buying from the stores, if y'all went to them plants and watched it can and what goes on, and you'll say that fella's pretty clean out here with his little setup. But it, that's all right. That right there, guys, all that pork coming out the end, the chicken feed, yeah, they love that. Now, guys, the next step of this process these little strainer bags, you can buy them in the canning section, or you can use cheesecloth or whatever, but I, I hang that right over that pot. I got me another one of my coffee cups. I ain't been drinking coffee out of that one, guys. Uh-oh. Come off my little holder there. I got a little third hand here. I can clamp that bag right there to hold it. And if you got a second person with you, you can do this a lot quicker. One can pick it up and pour it while the other one holds it. But after you pour so much there, then you got to pick it up. And this is where it takes a long time to strain. Strain it, screen it, string it, however you want to pronounce it. Just strain it down like that right there. Alright guys, then after you strain it down, get all your juice out of there. Then you can see you just end up, that's what you're screening out of your tomatoes. You can throw that in your pup bowl. But guys, if you like us and you don't, drink your tomato juice you're using it for cooking purposes i'm not going to use the bag i'm going to run it through this strainer here and what little bit of seeds or something's in there i settle to the bottom when you got your tomato juice can but we just use this for cooking purposes going through that little bag there takes too long plus this strainer right here just hangs right on that pot and you can let it sit there and drain through and go getting something else prepared so that's all going to depend on how good you want your tomato juice strained. If I was a tomato juice drinker, then I'd probably won't mind running through the fine at this fine bag. You're going to put a lot of time into that. We use ours to cook with. And I think the fine screen's doing good. 
run it through this drainer right here pretty quickly. And it ain't running through it real quick. But we're going to let that strain. Get all this into this pot. Put the lid on it. Set it in my refrigerator to keep it cool. And continue on with my tomato juice. right now what I'm doing I'm just doing another test for myself without changing the screen back to the medium screen and just doing these with the fine screen now what's gonna be the test I think it's going to work out fine with these frozen tomatoes. Like I said, because see these frozen tomatoes, after they thaw, they good and soft. You can just peel them. You don't even want to put the peeling in there. You can grab them and squeeze the peeling off. If you wanted to take the time to do that. which wouldn't take very long. But I'm gonna just put mine in there and let the machine do the job for me. That's what I purchased it for, ain't it? All right, guys, I got this big pot here. So about right there a juice. I got one more dish pan of tomatoes sitting back here to strain, but I'm gonna go on and put this big pot on the burner back in and let it slowly start heating up. That way that'll be slowly heating up to I don't put a top on it, but I have this little Live with holes in it here, that way can't nothing blow in there, which ain't no wind blowing right now because it's hot as the dickens out here. And we're going to continue on with this last dish pan of tomatoes, which pretty much ain't nothing but my honey, yellow honey do to like, so this juice is going to be real light colored. <laughs> but these are some good tasting tomatoes. We're about finished with this little step. All right, guys, that's all my tomatoes. So that was about three to four. Can't rightly remember right now. I think it was four of these dish pans here full of tomatoes. I ended up with three of this pans right here full of juice, which is going to be more than my pot over here holds. Now on my salsa, I had this pot about seven eggs full, I guess. And I ended up with 24 pints of salsa. And then I froze two quart bags that I'm going to use to experiment something else with on a cooking recipe. I'm going to top this all the way off because it's going to cook down. Even after it cooks down and I put this in there, I'm going to end up with this whole pot full. That's going to be about 30 pints or better of tomato juice. Hey right, guys, I brought this here. Pup out here to these chickens. Watch how they just love that stuff.
That's what you're talking about, Carson. Tell him about it. Tell him that's some good stuff. He stands back, makes sure all of his ladies gets their food, and then he'll get him a bite after he makes sure they all ain't fighting over nothing. All right, guys, now that I got my mess cleaned up, I know I made the comment I was cooking this tomato juice. You don't cook tomato juice. You just heat it up slowly, get it to about 190 degrees, such like that. That way, when you're putting it, your hot juice into your hot jars, the water bath can. Stir it down in there a little bit. I skim some of that top off. And I put it in this pan, I put it back in there, and then I can that in the bottom. So, like I said earlier, in my ball water, electric water bath canner here, after I wash my jars, I've had them sitting in this water at about 180 degrees, 190 degrees, just before a bowl. Now guys, there's a trick when you water bath canning. Your water you put in your canner there, if you add you about two or three tablespoons of vinegar to your water, it'll help your jars when they come out, they'll be clean after you can. Because if you got hard water, it'll leave that old white film stuff on your jars. But I always mention this in anything I'm canning. If you ain't never canned before and you want to can, the best thing you can do, guys, is you get you a ball blue book guide for preserving. There's other books out there. This is just a good one that I have that I go by. I got two or three, but I really like this one, and I'll put it in the description below. But don't go by YouTube videos or even my videos on how to can. You can watch the videos, see the process about doing it and stuff, but you always double check whatever your information you're getting in a canning book. First thing I'm gonna do to all my jars, I'm gonna put a tablespoon of lemon juice. And the purpose of that is, is cause you don't know your tomatoes like me using all different kinds of tomatoes, you don't know the acidity of them tomatoes. So it's safer to add you some acidity to them. And again, that's why you need to have your canning book. If you don't do canning right, it ain't that hard and ain't nothing to it, but if you don't do it right, your food can spoil. You could end up eating some food that makes you sick. So it's certain ways it has to be done. It's simple to do. But like I said, everyone, I'm going to keep saying it, everyone needs a canning book to depend on. Don't depend on videos. Watch videos to get the overall picture of how you're doing it and what to do as far as the recipes and exactly even what I'm doing double check it every time so I got my ball my cap rings over here I done put them in some hot water there I always put mine in hot water some of these new lids say you don't have to but I put them in some not boiling water but hot water that a way to soften the ring on it So my next step right here is I'm going to start loading these jars. Now according to the canning book, you leave about a quarter head space on tomato juice. Tomato sauce is like half inch head space. And since my juice ain't just pure juice all the way, I'm going to leave about three eighths head space. Now I'm going to try to dip down in here and get some of the thinner juice. That's some good looking juice right there now. If 
you don't know what the head space is, that means just from the top of the liquid to the top of the jar. If you fill it up too much, it can cause it not to seal. That's just the simplest way I can put it. Especially when you're doing something that you have in the pressure can. But I like going on filling all my jars. Some people do them one at a time, put their tops on them, but it's easier for me to do them all. And then clean the top of my jars. And then put my lids on, and then set them all in my water bath canner. But I am kind of working off-handed here. If I wasn't filming this, I wouldn't be set up this way. Because I'm right-handed. And I'm working on my left side. Hey, Colton. My grandson just showed up. He hollering, hey, Papa, over So y'all probably be hearing him in the background the rest of this video. But that's all right. That's what life's all about. This is real life living here. This ain't no made up TV show you watching. If you wanna watch a made up show, go watch Days of Our Lives or something. Didn't even waste your time and not learn nothing. Learn how to be corrupted in life and cheat on your spouses and all that good stuff is all you're going to learn from watching soap operas. And you think I'm joking about that, but your kids grow up watching that and they think that's all right. That's the way, that's the way life is. Now the best way to clean the top of your jars here, I got a little of this vinegar I put in a cup here and you put it on your paper towel. And that vinegar right there I clean the top of that jar good. Now I'm going to wipe every one of my jars. Like I said, I like doing mine kind of like assembly line lay way here instead of doing one jar at a time. Put your rings on, guys. You only just don't don't just tighten the crap out of them. Just run them down there finger tight. And you can see these rings ain't new. You can use your rings over and over. Don't mind if they got a little rust on them. As long as you wash them, desanitize them before you start. Now, guys, we finna go into the water bath canner. Now, depending on what size, what jars they are, how many this can or a hole. We got some jars I bought the other day, and they ain't exactly the same size as the ball pint jars. But with the regular pint ball jars, if I remember correctly, I could put 11 in there. But one of these jars is an oddball, even though it's a pint. But it won't let me get 11 in here. I only put 10 of them in here. And you want to make sure you get your water after you set them in there. Your water's at the, at the minimum, one inch above the top of your jars. Put your diffuser on there. You ain't got to have this. This just come with the canner. And it does keep you keep your bubbles from jumping over your jars there. Turn it on high and as soon as this thing starts to boil set you a timer for 35 minutes. When 35 minutes is up I come back turn it off take the lid off and I let them sit there about five minutes and then we'll take them out. 
fill up some new jars, do it again. Alright guys, so this is the last batch. And it actually like one jar being full. We done some quart jars in this one. I got four quarts and one pint in this last batch here. So let's see what we ended up with here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We got 15 pint jars. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 12 of these, they're about a pint and a quarter size jars. Like I said, I don't know where how I come about them. And then we got four quart jars. And that ain't bad out of, I think it was either three or three and a half of them dish pans. Pro probably if you piled them up real tall, it'd be three big dish pans full of tomatoes. And that was yellow honey delight tomatoes. And a few Italian ice, which is a little white cherry tomato. A few black pearl tomatoes which is a cherry tomato. I had some green zebra tomatoes in there, which is about an inch and a half diameter tomato, which is, when it gets ripe, it's green. And then I had some Cherokees and some celebrities and just a few Roma tomatoes in there. But guys, this has been pretty much an all day process. And that's what I got. So now I got my salsa can, I got my tomato juice can, and I asked some of my big tomatoes came off, come off in the next few days. I'm going to put up some just whole, not whole tomatoes, but tomatoes. But I don't like freezing them tomatoes. As you've seen, that freezing there, it'll work, but your tomatoes is going to be soft and smushy, so it needs to be tomato juice for my preference. I, I don't I don't think I want would like that for my whole tomatoes, but I'm gonna I still got some big tomatoes coming off when I'm calling big ones. I'm talking about not cherry tomatoes or little tomatoes, they just regular sized tomatoes. And that's what I do for my tomatoes. <clears throat> Hope you liked this little video. It wasn't no full blown video on how to can. I got some more videos that it goes more in depth about explaining. But I I am going to put into the description below the ball water bath canner here. If you think you might like it, I'm going to tell you I love it. What else did I have out here using? Oh, the, the Weston tomato strainer. I'll put it in the description below. I'm going to tell you I'm going to love it for making tomato juice in my salsa. Sure makes, makes things a lot faster. I'm all about the faster and easier stuff. Like I said, we don't drink tomato juice, guys. We just use it to cook with. That's why I started out straining them first few jars through that little string bag, and I'm like, that nah, ain't no sense in that, not when you're using it to cook with. But I hope you like these little videos. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button down below. It don't cost you a thing, but it does help me out, and I'm trying to grow this channel. Share my videos on your social medias so I can get my ugly face out there and maybe somebody like watching some of my stuff. But thanks for watching, guys. God bless. Y'all have a great day. See y'all next time.